Hey YouTubers, been a while. Um, Annie and I have been here working on uh, some business and uh, we have kind of completed a couple of things. So we had a few extra minutes and we decided we would uh, see if we could spend a minute or two and uh, catch you guys up on what's been going on. Um, been very, very busy. Uh, summertime, not usually a busy time, but it has for me this year. Um, got a lot of things going on, uh, a lot of irons in the fire as they say, um, but uh, I am going to try to uh, get back into uh, making some videos and uh, today's video um, I shot uh, a little while ago and uh, we're going to talk about uh, live foods and feeding live foods to your fish and fry. Um, give you a little insight on uh, what I've been up to and how I go through the process and uh, yeah hopefully you can get something out of it and let's get started right any get started yeah that's what I thought Okay, so this is the restructured room. Um, moved a lot of stuff around, added a couple of things. Um, first off, you see uh, I got my whole brine shrimp, baby brine shrimp and brine shrimp set up, moved over here by the window. I figured that the amount of sunlight that I can get in here, which is kind of limited because of the trees and everything outside, but um, you can see that I got uh, I can't tell what the camera's showing, but I think it's pointed at the uh, thing. You can see there's quite a few of them swimming around in there. So that's still kind of a project in uh, in the works. I haven't figured out exactly how to get a good yield out of that yet, but I'm eh, playing with it. I got my three chemicals, or salt, uh, baking soda, and... Uh, uh, little, little, but, uh, Epsom salts, potassium chloride, or whatever. That's to that's to uh, harden up the water a little bit so that the I get a much better yield on the baby brine shrimp. Uh, I got two vessels going here. The light, um, much, much, but much better and much more accessible, much easier to use setup like this than what I had going before. Um, I do have a piece of a. Uh, Lexan that um, if I can find uh, somebody who's got a good size hole saw or something like that I'm gonna have the circles cut in here so I can get rid of this piece of styro or whatever in the bottles to sit like that um, I found that the temperature in this room especially sitting below the window I don't even need an external heater or an internal heater for this thing now it maintains at about uh, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's sitting at about 80, 80 degrees as is. Um, if I take them out of the water, they do tend to get a little bit cooler. They go down around 78. So something about the water and I guess the light from the sun and the light there or whatever keeps them that extra couple degrees warmer so they get a much better hatch yield. So very, very happy with this new setup. Um, has worked out fantastic so far. So, and it's a lot neater, easier to get in and out of. Um, I got my little uh, thing here that uh, it's just a uh, permanent coffee filter with a very, very fine. I had to go to a couple places to find one that had the real fine netting on it. And a uh, styrofoam cup. You pop that guy down in there. Turkey baster. Put that on there. 
and uh, actually I do have to uh, go through, a, uh, well, I don't have to hatch, I do hatch them yet, but I'll just take that, slide it down there, take the light, move it down to the base because the baby brines will go towards the light. I let that sit for about five, oh, about ten minutes or whatever, and yeah, more like ten minutes, and they all congregate down here in the bottom part of the neck, and then I just go in with the uh, turkey baster, go down in there, draw them up, come over here, spell them in the uh, the little filter here, and then I take this all set up in there, rinse it with some fresh water, and take this out, and I got a little plastic container that I just rinse this out with some clean water into the little plastic container and I can feed from there. So that's my new baby brine shrimp setup. And I don't need to get these guys out quite this early. They got another couple hours before I need to pull them. So I'm gonna put them back. As you see, very very easy to set up. This is all brand new. Um, I went on Craigslist, found a guy who had a a, uh, actually it was unused um, he said he and his wife had gotten this wine cooler as a gift and he said they put a couple bottles in it at one point and he said they just really weren't wine drinkers so they boxed it back up and sat it out in the garage and it collected dust and he finally put it up on uh, Craigslist for sale and he wanted 75 I offered him 50 cash he took it so um, I priced this on, on Amazon and eBay. They run around 150 to 200 dollars new, and this was virtually new. So I got 150 dollars, say, at the, on the low end of the price. 150 dollar uh, wine cooler, hold 12 bottles, and uh, just pulled the shallows out, set it at uh, 54, or well, actually set, set it at 55. It's down to 54, and I got my uh, white worms in here, and my uh, brown shrimp eggs and some, some other foods that I keep in here um, first bites and there's some rapashi and some other stuff keep them in there nice and cool they're good to go in this container up here and I don't it doesn't have to be styrofoam it just happened to be this is what I had available I've got my uh, grindle worm collection and uh, as you can see, if you look down in there, now you can see them on the sides there too. All down in here, and uh, you can see how many are on that piece of plastic. And on that, that's all grindle worms, except for that one little glob, which is a piece of cat food. And I got two of these going. I feed these like every other day or so. So we're good there. Uh, the main reason for keeping them in this is just to keep them in the dark. They tend to get a better yield when you keep them in the dark. And that's room temperature. So they're, they're as far as worms go, they're probably one of the easier ones to, to uh, take care of and harvest. And uh, when I want to feed them, I've got uh, some old stale Cheerios cat food and some old stale uh, fish food or whatever that I just kind of threw into a bottle and I just add a couple to the little thing and I got my little spritzer bottle spray it down to keep the soil or the, the it's coconut husk actually or coconut fiber or whatever that I use as a substrate and keep it moist and that's all there is to it and that goes for both sets of worms um, um, by the way <coughs> for those of you um, I'm going to be talking about these two. These are uh, the uh, vinegar eels, which is really, really simple. Um, <clears throat> Size-wise, the vinegar eels are the smallest. Um, I would say micro worms would be the next step up. And I don't know if the micro worms are smaller than vinegar eels or if vinegar eels are smaller than micro worms or they're the same size. Worms. But this is best for fry, for, for the babies when they're first hatching out. Okay, and then, of course, the next size up would be going to the uh, baby rind shrimp for the babies. And then, once they've gotten to a little bit of size on them, you can start feeding them the uh, grindle worms, and that'll go up to a decent size. Um, even some of the even some adults, I got some angelfish that'll even eat the grindle worms. They'll go after it. It's a little small for them, but 
they'll still go after it. Um, white worms would be the next size up, and the angelfish truly love those. Uh, although I haven't gotten my my uh, levels up on the white worms yet, they're still not really producing for me yet, and I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong there. I gotta t talk to some people. Uh, if anybody out there has really been successful at uh, raising white worms and doing it in a in a little wine cooler or whatever, uh, please hit me up. Get in touch with me. Um, it's Paul's, Paul's with an S, Planted Aquariums with an S, at Gmail, or you can leave a comment down below or whatever. But um, I would definitely, uh, if anybody's got some suggestions or tricks or whatever on how to get the white worms to produce better, I would definitely be interested in listening and appreciate the input, because I just haven't really been able to get them to do much. You know, I've had these for a couple weeks now, and I've all still, actually over a month, and I'm still, you know, I've only like fed once out of there. And that was just a little bit that I could wipe off the side. Uh, they just don't seem to be really doing much. Uh, they seem to be eating a lot. I mean, I, gotta, I keep putting Cheerios in there and they keep disappearing. But I sure as heck don't see any that really come, you know, to where you can you can harvest them. So, anybody knows anything about that, uh, yeah, please hit me up with that. I would definitely appreciate it. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Vinegar eels, ultra simple. Um, you get a culture of them. You can find them on eBay. You can find them on Aquabid. Uh, you might probably even find them on Amazon or whatever, or Craigslist in your local or your local uh, fish club or whatever. But uh, at any rate, you get a culture of these things. Um, you want to get a bottle. That's uh, this. This in particular is a wine bottle, and um, you want it where it's you know wide at the bottom which comes up to a narrow neck. You want that as straight as possible, that little neck right there. As straight as possible. This one's a little bit tapered, so it's a little wider at the bottom than it is at the top, but yeah, that's what I had available. Um, you take and you put uh, half vinegar. Uh, I use apple cider vinegar. Seems it's cheap, easy to use. Fill it about halfway, right about there. And then the other half, to where you get up to about where it starts to slip back in that's that's where you're going to top off so you half and half water and vinegar is basically what it amounts to and um, you take a couple of I don't know if you can see those or not slices of apple just you know take a couple strips of apple or whatever doesn't matter what kind of apple and shove them down in there and uh, you add your culture to this, and within a couple weeks, you can start harvesting. And um, there's um, a couple ways of harvesting, um, but I'm going to do another video on that coming up, so we'll get into that later. Um, if you need to know now, uh, Corey uh, at Aquarium Co-op has a real good video on... Uh, on vinegar eels and uh, how they harvest and all that stuff uh, so you can check his channel out aquarium co-op give a call out to them As a matter of fact he was one that got me started on this but um, I did that and I also started this uh, actually I got two other cultures one of them still in the bathroom with the babies but I got another culture here um, these things are almost bulletproof once you get these things started you can set them off on a shelf and I mean, they they last almost forever. Um, uh, even Corey, um, in his video, he talks about he set one off, and two years later, he found it. He'd forgotten all about it, and found it two years later, and there were still live worms in there. So, yeah, it's <laughs> it's pretty simple as far as the foods go. Very very simple to run. The, the, that and Grindel worms are probably the two simplest live live foods that you can continuously, and they'll keep reproducing for you. Um, um, as I said, uh, the uh, the vinegar eels and the are almost definitely strictly for just fry. So if you're not raising babies and you just got small fish or whatever, don't even bother because they're so small that uh, the other fish will just swim past them like there there's nothing there. So um, that's really you only want to mess with these guys if you're if you got fish breeding. Um, Grindle worms uh, up to the size of a uh, maybe not a full-grown angelfish, but a, a, 
an angelfish size. You know, I mean, a medium-sized angelfish will will t will take them all the way down to uh, what, what I guess would be like a toddler type of fish. Um, we'll 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 take the white or the uh, grindle worms. White worms are a little bit bigger than the grindle. They're about maybe twice the size of the grindle worms, and uh, they're better for the bigger fish, live food wise. And then you get into black worms, which you got to order from. Uh, you got to order them online. Uh, I see that a, there's a couple of YouTubers out there that are attempting to uh, culture them and keep them alive for longer than uh, a certain. You know, I, I guess they last about. Uh, I got uh, an eighth of a pound of them, and the eighth of the pound lasted. I, I think I had them. I kept them going for about a month. Of course, I did use the little worm keeper, which is this thing right here. Yeah. And yes, I had to buy this. <laughs> I got this from California Black Worms. Um, it's a little two-part thing. It's got a little screen in the bottom of it right here. And you fill the bottom part with cool water, cool dechlorinated aged water. And um, you put the worms in this top part right here and you slide it down in there to where the water level is just over, just covering the worms or a little bit, a little bit beyond covering the worms and they live down in that really cool water and then you just put it in your fridge or wine cooler or whatever they like to be in a cool cool atmosphere it, it slows down their metabolism they don't uh, decompose the dead ones don't decompose as fast i guess and the uh, the live ones will stay alive longer because they're not you know i mean there's the, you don't feed them because you don't want that extra slop in with the worms so uh you just change the water out every day you pull these guys out, set them off to the side, rinse them off a little bit, put the fresh water in, slide that down in there, put them back in the fridge. Or grab what you need to feed with and then put them back in the fridge. They'll last about a month before they really start to die off completely or they get so skinny they're not not really worth you know even trying to feed. So um, that's a neat little setup right there. And by the way, that little you could make a version of of this, especially like I, I thought about it. You could even use one of these little guys and just find a smaller or a shorter container or whatever like that to where what you have to have is a little bit of room below the bottom of this thing before the water can sit, and then uh, put the worms in here and just set that there and put it down. In. I mean, that would work too. So, but uh, that was one of those at the checkout aisle. I, they, they had them on special that day, and I thought, eh, yeah, throw one of those in there. Just because it was neat looking. <laughs> but, uh, at any rate, uh, that's the setup for my live, uh, for my live food uh, stuff. Um, uh, I do want to get some micro worms. Uh, I did uh, email... Uh, chat with uh, uh, Pittsburgh Pets, I believe it is, uh, who also raises German Blue Rams. Uh, chatted with him a little bit, and uh, I need to get back with him and get a culture of micro worms from him so I can get them rolling. Um, I held off at that point because I hadn't gotten the wine cooler yet, and they're also uh, worms that like the cooler. They need you, you need to have them in like the wine cooler. Um, um, by the way, the difference between the wine cooler and the fridge is the fridge is a lot colder. Um, the white worms and the micro worms like it between about 55 and 65 degrees. Okay, um, a refrigerator usually runs down in the 40s to 50 degrees. Yes, you could take one of those little fridges and turn it to its warmest setting and it would probably work okay. Um, but, uh, you know, I mean, if if the fridge works why would you well I guess if you had the extra one laying around it wouldn't be a big thing but you know I just uh, you know I, I you know it's a fridge <laughs> you know, I got my wine uh, Mountain Dew and water and juice and puddings and you know <laughs> I, I do keep my frozen food in here though the little section right in there I do keep my frozen food there <laughs> so but, you know, I use a fridge for a fridge, and I thought, you know, hey, uh, you know, hit up Craigslist, and I got lucky, and, uh, you know, scored a real good deal on this thing, and uh, 
and it's perfect. I mean, it, it, you can set the temperature, you know, with a little digital thing. It's got a little light inside. So you turn it on and off. Uh, pulls a lot less energy than a regular fridge does, too. So, and, uh, you know, hey, if I ever get out of the fish uh, business or whatever and feel like chilling out or whatever like that, I can slide the racks back in, which are right down here. So, I can slide those guys back in and uh, fill it full of wine. Yeah, pull double duty. Uh, anyways, I'm rambling. So, uh, thanks for uh, joining me on my little trip through live foods. I uh, hope you guys picked up some ideas. Um, once again, if anybody has some advice on the white worms, and what I might be doing wrong with them, uh, please comment below or shoot me an email. And, uh, yeah, that's all I got for you today. Uh, everybody enjoy your summer, and uh, we will see you soon.